If Braden Shoemate continues to perform the way that he has early on in spring training, we could have a serious battle at the shortstop position for the Atlanta Braves in the future. On today's ep episode, we're going to talk about the most impressive prospects so far in spring training for the Braves on this episode of Lockdown Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my website, shortstopball. Dot com, or you can some of my written material and my other work that I do. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at locked on underscore brave. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitch as well. Started doing that over the weekend. Gonna look to do that a lot more during the regular season as I watch games and play MLB the show as well. So if you want to come join that, make sure that you follow me at, on Twitch at shortstop ball as well. And thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of each and every day. We post episodes a daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. This is a Miners a Monday episode of Lockdown Braves. We're going to be talking about the most impressive prospects that we've seen in spring training. As spring training kind of winds down over the last two and a half of weeks here, you'll start to see less and less at-bats for some of these prospects, although a lot of them that we're going to talk about are still competing for jobs and one in particular, Braden Shoemake, who we talked about last Monday on last Monday's Minor Monday, Miners Monday episode. Could we have a real battle at the shortstop position? Maybe not right now, but in the future, if Braden Shoemake continues to perform as he has. But let's talk about the most impressive prospects that we've seen thus far. And I think for me and a lot of people, the biggest one is still. Dylan Dodd. I know he had a rough outing his last time out against the Dominican Republic, but you take a look at that lineup and you can see why a lot of pitchers are probably going to struggle against that lineup. But outside of that, particularly his first two Grapefruit League starts, he, he may have been one of the most impressive players in all of spring training for the Braves. In those first two starts, four and a third innings, three hits, no walks, which is very key, no earned, and seven strikeouts. So again, very dominant in his first two Grapefruit League starts. Was really good in his first two innings against the Dominican Republic. Things kind of got away from him that second time through the order. He ended up going two and two-thirds innings, four hits, three walks, five earned, and two strikeouts. But again, in the first two innings, he gave up just one hit, no runs, and had two strikeouts before things kind of got away from him. The biggest thing for me for Dylan Dodd is that fastball. It is just It has a lot of life on it. You hear it from other players facing him, just how much that fastball gets on you, even though it's more of a low to mid 90s fastball. It has some serious life on it, and that's been impressive. He's 24. So, you know, it's not like he's a super young, up and coming prospect, but he has just 53 innings above A ball. So, even as impressive as he has been, I think, regardless, unless there are just several more injuries or, you know, Ian Anderson can't figure it out, Bryce Elder takes a step back. I still think Dylan Dodd needs more refinement in the minor leagues, but to me, I see more upside in him after watching him in spring training than I did previously coming into this season. I ranked him 10th on my top 10 prospect list, and I put him with a ceiling as a number three, which I that's still where I would have him even after seeing him, but the fastball just has more life on it. Than I could recall, you know, watching him and some of his minor league starts. So been very impressed with Dylan Dodd. A lot of you as well I asked on Twitter and a lot of people said Dylan Dodd. And I think that's certainly fair. We're going to talk about Schuster as well. I think both of those guys are right there. I had him ranked nine and 10th in my Braves prospect system rankings. And I think both of those have the ceiling of a number three starter. And they've both been very impressive in spring training so far. I still think Dodd is behind. Soroka, Ian Anderson, Bryce Elder, and Jared Schuster. But he's somebody now at this point where I would feel comfortable if the Braves needed to call him up to make a couple of starts during the regular season in 2023. 
Now, the other player who has impressed a lot and more so recently is Braden Shoemake. And we talked about him again last Monday. MLB Pipeline had him ranked sixth in the Brave system, which is much higher than a lot of other places out there. That was primarily for his defense. And you read the write up on him by MLB Pipeline. And they said whether or not he improves with the bat will determine if he can become a regular everyday regular player or not, or just becomes a, a defensive utility bat or utility player, which is what I always thought Braden Shoemake would be. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's needed. I've said one of the biggest weaknesses for this Braves team is just their lack of infield depth, especially at the minor league level. But the defense for Braden Shoemake, it looks legit. And the few games that I've been able to watch him play at shortstop, he looks really good. And the Braves are moving him around, showing his versatility, playing at second as well. He started a game there the other day. So I'm really impressed with Braden Shoemake. And this is a prospect that I had kind of thrown by the wayside, honestly, several years ago. So I thought, you know, he's certainly has impressed me in spring training. I think he's impressed a lot of people. And it's a small sample size, but he's starting to show that potential with the bat. And again, if that were to come around, you're talking about somebody who could be an everyday player at a premium position at shortstop. He started slow at the plate, just one for six at the beginning of spring training. But his last five Grapefruit League games, he's five for 12 with two doubles. Against Puerto Rico, he was three for four with a double. So you combine his entire spring training, including those World Baseball Classic games, he's nine for 23, which is a 391 average. I don't think Braden Schumacher's going to flirt with 400 in the big leagues, but that's still really impressive. Three doubles, one walk, and three strikeouts. He had done a great job before the injury at, in the minor league at AAA last year, cutting down on his strikeout rate, and I think you're seeing – that continue in spring training but now we're seeing starting to see him with some power in the gaps does he ever become a 20 home run potential type bat i don't know but you know if he can just become a good doubles hitter and get double digit home runs and he can hit 275 280 and maybe that's being a little too high but if you can do that and the defense is legit and again it from everything you hear from talent evaluators and just what little I've seen in spring training, it does look like he will be a very good plus defender. Then maybe perhaps we have a battle at shortstop on our hands between he and Von Grissom, a battle that I don't think many people saw coming. And look, you don't want to overreact to a small sample size in spring training, 20 at bats, He's not going to come out of spring training as the starting shortstop for the Braves. I don't think so. I still think that's Von Grissom's job to lose. But if Braden Shoemake goes to AAA again and he continues to show improvement at the plate, he cuts down on that strikeout rate. You know, he starts to drive the ball a little bit more with some power and is, you know, having the good exit velocities, which has been kind of the knock on him as he just doesn't make enough consistent hard contact. He makes a lot of contact, but not hard contact, if he can start doing that, and we see that consistently at AAA, and you see that average come up, you see the doubles, perhaps some more home runs, then I think we have a legitimate chance of seeing Braden Shoemake push for the starting shortstop job, assuming Grissom doesn't just run away with it. And Grissom has been, you know, he's looked better defensively as the spring has gone on. These last couple of ga games have been able to watch him play, and he looks much more fluid out there defensively at shortstop, and that's great to see. And again, I have very few questions about Von Grissom with the bat. So I, again, we need to see more of it from Shoemake, but he may be more than any prospect coming into spring training needed to improve his stock and show some improvement, and he has certainly done that, which makes me feel so much better about the infield depth in the system if Braden Shoemake can continue to perform as he has in spring training. So I just think it's I think it's a great thing. It creates more competition and it provides more depth. So I've been very happy with what I've seen from Braden Shoemake. Now there's a couple of other prospects who've impressed in spring training as well. Schuster that we mentioned and a couple of other outfielders who have surprised as well. We'll talk about them here next. 
These days, every new potential hire feels like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Just add your job, the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Going to be a fun week on the podcast. Going to be previewing the upcoming season, looking at the NL East, previewing, giving my NL East preview, previewing the Braves pitching staff, and previewing the Braves offense. So it's going to be a really good week, so make sure you are checked in for that. Subscribe to wherever you get your Locked On podcast, and make sure you're subscribed on YouTube as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. But I want to get into some other prospects who have impressed in spring training and the next one is jared schuster who pitched on sunday was really good we'll talk about that more in a second but overall now in spring training eight and two-thirds innings two hits just one walk one earn and nine strikeouts he has been very very impressive that change up as i've said multiple times it's a filthy change up it's a plus plus pitch and i was listening to the pirates announcers on sunday and when they saw that change up, the name they mentioned was Tom Glavin. Now they're not comparing him to Tom Glavin, but it's a lefty with a really good change up and a Braves uniform. And that's all they were saying. But not just to tell you how good that change up is. And in that start on Sunday, you could see starting to get that slider over for strikes more. Saw him up to 94 with the fastball. Uh, he's just, he's been very impressive again i still think his ceiling is a number three and i think he's more likely going to be a back of the rotation arm but he's somebody with his command with the movement and again a plus plus pitch in that changeup. i think he's somebody who can be a very solid piece in the rotation like dylan dodd i still think he's behind soroka when healthy i still think he's behind ian anderson and bryce selder despite some of their struggles in spring training but I still think it's a battle, and I still think Jared Schuster is firmly in that battle. He could potentially get three more starts in spring training. So, again, I'm not completely dismissing him for that fifth starter spot because I think he's at least earned a longer look uh, as well. You know, I haven't been overly impressed with Ian Anderson or Bryce Elder in spring training. So, I think Schuster certainly deserves a longer look, as I said. But he's been very impressive so far. Now, somebody was who was not even on my radar coming into spring training. I don't even know that I mentioned the fact that the Braves acquired him this past offseason. And that is Forrest Wall. And I don't know if you completely consider him a prospect at this point. He's 27 years old. But formally drafted 35th overall in 2014. Hasn't made his Major League debut to this point. And so far in spring training, he's seven for 21, three doubles, three walks, three strikeouts, four stolen bases in Grapefruit League action against the Dominican Republic. He led off that game with two for three and had two stolen bases. He has over 200 stolen bases at the minor league level, and he had 52 all of last year. This guy is a weapon for the Braves, and he's been a weapon so far in spring training. Look, I don't. I don't know how well he'll do over an entire season if he were to be a regular, but that speed is a weapon, I think, especially with the new rules. And you see it, and you see him deploying that in spring training. When he gets on base, whether it's a walk or a single, it's essentially a double because he is taking second base at will. And so I think that certainly improves his stock and the ability to get to the big league level this year with the Braves and have an impact. You know, Eli White's in that same situation who can get on base, can steal you a bag. But Forrest Wall has been really impressive so far in spring training. I think he's turned a lot of heads with the way that he has performed. And I think he's somebody we have to at least talk about. That's what I tweeted the other day. You know, at what point do we start talking about 
forest wall. Well, that that point has come and it is here now. Somebody said we start talking about him once I start mentioning him on the podcast. So here I am mentioning him, letting you know, keep an eye on forest wall. If he can continue to get on base with that speed, he can have an impact on the baseball. It's going to be, you know, another just, you know, good outfield depth. And I've talked about this a lot with the Braves outfielders. Yeah, I don't know for certain that the Braves have somebody who can play left field every day. But the depth guys that they have are really solid. And I feel comfortable that one of those guys could potentially break out and maybe become that everyday guy. I don't know that it's Forrest Wall. I'm not saying that. But with what I've seen in spring training from all these guys, you know, Eli White, Sam Hilliard, uh, we're got to see Jordan Luplo on Sunday. He's coming back. Forrest Wall. And then the next guy I want to talk about, Justin Dean. He has been impressive as well. And kind of the same thing as Forrest Wall, speedy outfielder with good defense. He's six for 14 this spring, a double, three walks, three, three strikeouts, and three stolen bases. So he's been very solid as well and kind of that same mold as Forrest Wall, as Eli White, although he Dean doesn't impact the ball quite as much with that power, but somebody who could be a fourth outfielder, could give you some speed and defense off the bench. Looking at some responses on Twitter as I asked who has impressed you the most in spring training, a lot of you had the same answers as I did. Steve Lamb says Dylan Dodd, and I can understand, especially with the way that he jumped onto the scene in spring training in that first spring training game. I think Dylan Dodd has impressed a lot of people so far. Corey Slovic says, for me, it's Shoemake and Wall, two of the guys we talked about today. Before this spring, spring, all I'd heard about Shoemake was that he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Might have been me who said that. I don't know. But Wall seemingly came out of nowhere. I'd legitimately never heard of his name before. I'm right there with you. Again, I wasn't even aware the Braves had picked him up this offseason, and he has certainly impressed in spring training. Uh, 2023 NL MVP Matt Olson on Twitter also said Forrest Wall, 333 batting average, seven hits, two doubles, three walks, three RBI, eight runs, five stolen bases, and no, and hasn't been caught stealing. And I think those eight runs are key. I know a run runs is a stat we kind of throw away, but he's getting on base, he's stealing bases, and he's scoring. I mean, that is legitimately important. And a lot of times when Snicker has put him in the lineup, he's put him at the top. And I think for that very reason, because when he gets on base, he can score, you know, similar to Acuna. I'm not saying he's Acuna, but that's why they put Acuna in the leadoff spot. Because when Acuna gets on, he's usually going to be at second. And before you know it, he's going to be coming home and touching home plate. So Forrest Wall has had that kind of impact on the game in spring training so far. Kirby D says it's Schuster for me. Guy's been lights out. Dylan Dodd not far behind. And I agree. I think Dylan Dodd, again, like I said with Steve Lamb, who said Dylan Dodd, I think Dodd came onto the scene really hot. Yeah, he may have taken a little step back there against the Dominican Republic that second time through the lineup, perhaps so showed some holes in his game that he's to figure things out that second time through. But I, I think both of those guys have been very impressive, and you feel comfortable about either of them making starts for you this year. And then Chip Hendricks as, as well said Jared Schuster. So it's been a good spring training, I think, for Braves prospects at the upper level. We kind of came into spring training not really knowing what we had in some of these guys or some of them we just – needed to see more of it. Now, this is spring training. It's a small sample size. You have to remember all that. But I'm going based off what my eyes are visually telling me on the games that I actually get to watch. And I'm still been very impressive or very impressed with a lot of these prospects. And it gives me some hope for the upcoming season and the future and just that depth that we've talked about. Look, the Braves' big league roster, big league rotation is fine. They're, they're set there. but one of the biggest worries for me has been that depth. And the one thing that I feel more comfortable about now through a couple of weeks of spring training games is the Braves depth, whether it's those outfield pieces or on the infield, I feel much better now than I did entering spring training. And that's certainly a great thing. So next I want to get to some of the takeaways from the weekend, Ian Anderson, Charlie Morton, both kind of some up and down outings. Perhaps they're still working on things. And then, uh, Ozzy gets his first home run of the spring. Michael Harris with a good good uh, home run as well on Sunday. We talked about Jared Schuster, and we'll discuss that more here next. The Built Mar March Madness bracket is here, and now it is a couple of years ago. It was a lot of fun, and now they're bringing it back. 
We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You'll know I'll be betting for my favorite, which is the Cookies and Cream, as I always tell you on here. And if you want the Braves to win, you'll go vote for Cookies and Cream as well. And when you vote your, your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. So if you're a Built Bar fan, you got to go in and submit your vote at a chance at winning uh, free a box of Built. And one lucky Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built, which will have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built Bar. Again, we tell you about them all the time. They're the best protein bar out there. They're so amazing. You won't think they're good for you. But what makes Built Bars and Puffs so good is that they are high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% real chocolate. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff. And let me know in the comment section below, what's your favorite Built Bar or Built Puff? Uh, let me know. would love to hear from you there. And as we've been telling you, you can go to Built.com to order your boxes, or you can go out to Sam's Club or Walmart and grab yourself a box today. Getting into the takeaways from a weekend's action on Friday, Ian Anderson started out really rough in that game and just couldn't command anything. Couldn't command the fastball, couldn't command the changeup. He didn't give up much. He, he only gave up one run, one hit, but he walked three over three and two thirds innings, two strikeouts. And by the end of the outing, it kind of just felt like the old Ian Anderson, if I'm being quite honest, which I would definitely take. And I think that's somewhat of a good thing. Look, even when Ian Anderson was pitching well for the Braves, you'd look up after five innings, his pitch count would be in the nineties and he'd walk three batters, but he'd only allowed one or two hits and he'd only give up one or two runs and he'd have, five or six strikeouts. I mean, that was Ian Anderson when he was at his best. It just kind of feel, felt like he battled through five innings. He threw a bunch of pitches. He walked a bunch of batters, but he didn't give up a lot of hits. And that's just kind of how he's been. And if we can get that Ian Anderson back, that would be fine. And I think you could live with that. But that's kind of how that start felt for Ian on Friday. He looked terrible to begin with, couldn't command anything, but got out of some jams, didn't let it hurt him. And then he started to find that changeup. The changeup was really good the last inning plus for that game. But the fastball concerns me the most right now. That is the biggest concern in my mind for Ian Anderson. It's not a high velocity pitch. He was more around 92 with it on Friday and just couldn't command it. I mean, even throughout the entire start, just couldn't command it. Finally, he found that changeup, and that's why he was able to get through three and two thirds innings. And I thought the curveball looked good. I mean, the curveball to me was a better pitch than his fastball. He just he couldn't command it, and it's not a high spin rate fastball. It's not a high velocity fastball, and if you can't command it, then you're going to be in trouble. But that changeup, once he got going with it, it looked like again one of the better changeups in all of baseball. Nick Anderson on Friday had a really another really solid outing, clean outing with two strikeouts. Again, he he looks like he could be in a big league bullpen. We'll see if a spot opens up for him there, or if he creates one himself. Grissom made the best play that I've seen from him all spring on Friday. Ball hit up the middle, kind of reached for it, spun, and threw a dart to first base. So again, like I said, the more I've been able to see him in spring training has gone on with my eyes. I'm seeing some improvements defensively, starting to look more comfortable there, so that's great. Perhaps a little bit of nerves early on. As he know, he knows his defense needs to improve, and that's what everybody's looking at. But past couple of games, I've been able to see him. He's looked much more smooth at shortstop. On Saturday, Ozzy Albies had his first home run of the spring. It's funny they were talking about how much Ozzy has struggled on the broadcast, and then he absolutely belts a three-run homer in that game. Shoemake with an impressive line drive RBI double off the right center wall in that game that scored Marcelo Zuna from first base, which is just kind of crazy. Um, and then again, for Charlie Morton on Saturday, it was it was good and bad, kind of like Ian Anderson. Two and two-thirds innings, one hit, but three walks. No runs, though, but three strikeouts. So it's kind of the same thing there. And it looked like early in that outing for Morton, he was really struggling to command that curveball, which this is where you got to take a step back and realize he's a veteran. This is what spring training is for. It's for pitchers to find their command, and it's for hitters to get their timing. And that's what spring training is for, especially for veterans. I think he said after the game that was 
you know, the essential of getting your work in. And that's exactly what he was doing. I'd love to see him be a little bit sharper, but he's likely has at least two, maybe three more outings in spring training before the regular season to work that out. So not too concerned or overly concerned with Charlie Morton. The entire bullpen was dreadful on Saturday. I'm not really worried about that either, but whether it was Iglesias, Venter, Jimenez, they were all bad. Um, so hopefully they get that figured out, but I have very few concerns about the bullpen once the regular season begins. On Sunday, Michael Harris had an opposite field home run. We talked about Schuster, how good he looked. Three and two-thirds innings, one hit, no walks, one earned, give up a home run to Brian Reynolds on a one-two pitch that was supposed to be down and away. He left it out over the plate, and Reynolds crushed it and five strikeouts. So Jared Schuster looked really good. As far as some news news side of things, not much there over the weekend. Colin McHugh, as you may have noticed, hasn't pitched this spring. Ryan Snicker said, Snicker said there's nothing to it. He's been throwing fine. They just don't want to rush him because of all the workload, uh, the high workload that he had last year. Again, it's why I'm not really worried about bullpen. I think bullpen guys could come like in middle March to start gearing up for the regular season as they don't have to get all stretched out. So really don't worry about relievers too much, especially better and established relievers. Don't worry about them really at all in spring training. And then Ronald Acuna Jr., I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon, posting it on Monday. But um, So Acuna's only played one game in the World Baseball Classic, and it was not a best performance. Venezuela, his team, got a big win over the Dominican Republic, but may have been one of Acuna's worst games that he's ever played. He grounded into a double play twice, and he struck out as he went over four in that game. So a rough start to him for the World Baseball Classic. USA won their game over Great Britain. So I've been enjoying the World Baseball Classic. I've been getting on Twitch at night and watching some of that while chatting with some of you. So if you want to join that, make sure that you follow me over on Twitch at Shortstop Ball. But that will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Braves your first listen of each and every day. Now go make your second listen to Locked on MLB Prospects podcast, where host Lindsey Crosby talks about the biggest and brightest stars of tomorrow. So again, thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked on underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked on Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.